Well, hello, and you're really, really welcome to join us today for our daily service. All this week we've been looking at some words from James chapter 1, but to start off today I'm going to read from 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, where Paul uses very similar to language to what James uses, and which we'll be looking at later. Let me read. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Father God, we do long for your appearing, and we pray that as we dwell together today, we pray that we might long for your appearing more. We thank you there is a crown of righteousness laid up for us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're at the end of our week in James 1, so I'm going to read all the verses we've looked at this week, and the verse we'll be looking at today. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded, and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed. Where do you think the good life, the blessed life, is found? I guess naturally when we hear that term blessed, we think of the materially blessed life. The yacht in the Mediterranean, the, the, uh, the house down in Cornwall the lovely car sitting in the drive. We think of the materially blessed life, or we think of the kind of the relationally blessed life, the hashtag blessed Instagram picture with lots of smiling, happy faces, a family gathered together. Or we think of the success, the life of success, blessed because we've succeeded in our world of career, or we've succeeded in the arts world or the sports world, we've succeeded in the business world. I'm blessed because I've succeeded. It makes what James says about the blessed life perhaps somewhat jarring. Because James says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Blessed is the one who stands a test. Blessed is those who are tested now. Tested Perhaps because of living in a broken world and experiencing the reality of that affliction because we live in a world which is broken. Perhaps tested, having to persevere under trial because of our Christian faith and feeling pressure because of that. Perhaps being tested and having to persevere because of the ongoing disorderedness of our own hearts. James, he, he likens life in this world being tested now, to being put under pressure. 
Imagine feeling like you're, you're being pushed downwards by the air. Or perhaps even the ceiling is dropping down on you. And you're feeling the pressure from above. And if you're a Christian believer, sometimes that is what life feels like, isn't it? Whether it be normal affliction by living in a broken world, whether it be because we're Christian believers, whether it be internal and feeling pressure and, and testing and trials and temptation from our own sinful hearts. We feel pressured. And instead of standing the test, so tempting for our head to go down, our shoulders to hunch, our backs to bend. We're tested now and it doesn't feel very much like the blessed life. So how can James say that the good life, the blessed life, is a life of being tested now? It's because of what he knows is coming in the future. Tested now, crowned later. Blessed is one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. We won't always feel that downward pressure on us, because one day those that love and know the Lord Jesus will be raised up, will be exalted. And the language James uses wonderfully is will be crowned, receive the crown of of life. Now who gets crowns in this world? Well kings and queens get crowns, don't they? Think of the queen coronated. Perhaps some of us are joining in today remember that coronation. Whenever I think of coronations, I think of Aragorn at the end of the Lord of the Rings. Crowned as Frodo passes the crown to Gandalf, Aragorn kneels before Gandalf and Gandalf places the crown on his head. If you know and love the Lord of the Rings, go and read that scene again towards the end of the book. It's a beautiful moment. Kings and queens get crowned. And so there is a sense in which the Lord Jesus will be our great king, the king of the nations, the ruler of the world, will be crowned when he returns. But remarkably... The Christian is pulled into that story, that reality. James, Paul spoke about it at the beginning of the service in 2 Timothy. Christians will be crowned too. The, the queen was coronated. And only she received the crown. Jesus will be coronated. And each and every one of his people will be crowned with him. We are blessed. We are blessed because whilst we are tested now, we will be crowned later. And in the meantime, in the words of the song we're about to sing, we run the race before us, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as we go. Let's sing.
as I seek the last to win. And may they forget the channel, sing only him, sing only him. We're going to proclaim our faith, including our belief in the new creation, which is sure and firm because of Jesus' resurrection. Let's say together. We believe in God the Father, by whose great mercy we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We believe in God the Son, who died for our sin and rose again for our justification. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, we pray for all those facing tests and trials at this time, who feel the pressure of life in this broken world, or the pressure of being a follower of Jesus, or the tests of te te facing temptation, and the test of trying to live for Jesus. Please, in your kindness, would your people know that whilst they are tested now, they will be crowned later. Amen. Father God, we lift to you Christians facing poverty, or Christians facing persecution from the state or from those around them for following the Lord Jesus. We lift to you those known personally to us, particularly suffering in body or mind or soul or spirit. Might you, the God of all comfort, comfort them by your spirit. Might they know they are blessed because of the crown of life that is awaiting them. Father God, we pray all these prayers, knowing that you are our Father who bends to hear the prayers of his children and who delights to answer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to close with a final prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, the protector of all who put their trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that you, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we may not lose the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day, whatever you're doing. <laughs>